All right, um, it's good evening for me. And what time is it for you? It's seven o'clock in the morning here, in my <laughs> part right. of the world. <laughs> All right. And so we're gonna be talking today about malabsorption, I think, is that right? Yes, Doc. Okay. And um, are we gonna talk a little bit about your background? Yes, please. Okay, so um, basically you had a mini gastric bypass. Yes, Doc, I had my mini gastric bypass in May 2019. In 2019, and then you weighed about how many kilos? Uh, 85. 85 kilos, so in U.S., about 180 pounds, something like that, 160, 170 pounds? That's right. Okay. And my height was, uh, my height is 5'6". Okay. And then you did well for a period of time. I did well for a period of time, and then I started having uh, pain in my stomach, which was which the doctors diagnosed as pancreatitis. Uh, cystic right. fibros. Yeah, yeah they made a lot of. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to skip over the details, but ultimately, you had such massive weight loss that you were at risk of losing your life. We think, right? That's right. Okay, so around the world, this kind of situation is viewed with some confusion, and some people say that's a complication of the mini gastric bypass and they say they understand it and it happens because too much of the gut is bypassed. Have you heard that? I've heard that. Yeah, and so um, I think that's not the case. And uh, I have some research over the past year and we're gonna talk about it a little bit tonight because there's uh, some steps we wanna talk about what you had done to fix your problem and then to talk further about malnutrition. Is that kind of our goal tonight? Yes, please. Okay, so um, I'll summarize that you kind of got sicker and sicker over a period of six or 12 months. Absolutely. And you were hospitalized and they said all kinds of things, pancreatitis and, and, and this and that. Uh, and your doctor- Cystic fibrosis, think, celiac disease, autoimmune. <laughs> Right. And we don't want to say anything negative about them, but when I hear that, it sounds like they were pretty confused. And I was taking, Doc, 23 pills a day. <laughs> right. And so we don't want to be critical of them, but I think- No, that no, no. Yes, you're right. Yeah. We're not, we, we don't want to be critical about the past. No, 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 no. But my opinion is that the entire earth of doctors and surgeons and patients are a little confused about this topic. And that's what we're gonna talk about tonight because you had a Lovely. treatment that was about how long ago Dr. Asif in um, Pakistan uh, operated on you for the second time. Uh, Dr. Asif uh, operated like 15, 20 days back. Yeah. And so what we said is you and I talked, we thought you were so sick that we had to do the radical procedure of revision of MGB, right? Right. And we're gonna go into more detail over that and this and other things. But since that time, since you had the revision, how are you doing? Doc, uh, yes, that's very important. I feel good, I feel energetic, but uh, I've left all the medicines, the 23 medicines that I was taking, the Delta Cotrill and everything. My sugar levels are perfect, normal, there's no issue. Uh, the only prop, uh, my bowel movement is perfectly fine. Uh, the poop is okay. There's no uh, oil in it. There's no nothing. But the thing is, anybody who looks at me, he says, oh, you, Muhammad, you've gone so weak. You've lost a lot of weight. So now the diet that you explained to me, I, I came down to the diet, 60% uh, of it. I'm following it strictly, six meals a day with the uh, uh, steel cut uh, oats and okay, okay, okay. Uh, fermented vegetables wait a, wait a, and everything. Wait a second, wait a, okay. Yeah, we're gonna go into all that, So, but we're gonna do it in baby steps. So I understand where we're going, but for the people who are listening in, let me go back over. So you got really sick, you had a revision with Dr. Atif at my kind of direction, and we undid the MGB and it took a very short time. How long were you in the hospital in Pakistan, in Islamabad? In three days. In three days, you were on your road to getting better. And you mentioned you got off 23 medicines and uh, your diarrhea and other things got better. 
much better. Okay. And then we're going to talk a little bit about that for not just for you, because you know about it, but for the other people who are listening. And then by understanding that a little better, then we're going to get to your main question tonight, because you know all that. And I don't need to go over that for you, but we're doing it as a public service for other people, because a lot of surgeons, Absolutely. patients and doctors are confused and it's not a criticism, but you and I know something, you and I and Dr. Atif know something that a lot of other patients and doctors around the world don't know. Right. And then we're gonna say, you are still not perfect. And so you wanna get more better or what we would say using poor English, you wanna get more better. And that's what we would say <laughs> in the South, we wanna get more better. And uh, so we're gonna work on that, but that's gonna be a little bit later in our talk if, if that's okay, if I have your permission. Absolutely. Okay, good. So I'm gonna go back over your situation uh, around the world, most bariatric surgeons would say that your complication came because you had too long a bypass. And what we're going to say is that's not the case. That what we have found is that the reason you get that deterioration from a good MGB to a bad MGB is because of S I B O. And that's an abbreviation for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which means I have to talk a little bit about what's inside your gut. And so if I have your permission, I'll go ahead on that for a second. I'm listening, Doc. Good. Okay. So here's the deal. Inside of us is what's called the microbiome. And what we used to think of as the small intestine, um, which is around six meters long, we thought that was sterile. There was no bugs in there, no bacteria. And then once you got to the colon, there was a bunch of bacteria and we didn't care about it. So we just thought, I mean, we were wandering around with us, a few extra bacteria in our colon and that's it. And it didn't make any difference what bacteria in general were in your colon unless there was something bad, like an infection like dysentery or some other really bad bugs. There's one called Clostridia difficile. And that was our opinion up until about five or 10 years ago. What we know now is that you and I are who we are based on the bacteria in our gut. And that's got a special name. So if you've got a paper and pencil, um, it would be good to write some of this down. So have you got a paper and pencil? Yes, sir, I have. Good, okay. So I'm gonna give you a word which you may know already, but for our listeners, it's called the microbiome or micro like microscope and biome like B-I-O, like biology, me, like you and me. The microbiome is basically all these bugs that live inside us. And now we know there are bugs that live in our stomach, not many. There are bugs that live in our small intestine and they tend to be a little bit more numbers wise and flavor white size, different flavors are change in the genus and species of the bugs inside our gut as they move from the top to the bottom. And then at the junction between the small intestine and the large intestine, there's a whole bunch of bugs down there. Now, what we know is that we don't know much. We know a lot of new things. And one thing we know is these bugs are related to our diet and they're related to what we call food poisoning. You've heard of that, right? Yes. Okay. And so we're famous in the United States when some Americans would go to Mexico and drink the water, they had a high rate of contamination with a protozoa called Giardia. In Pakistan, did they ever have uh, uh, diarrhea illnesses with Giardia? Have you heard of that before? Mm, I'm not sure, Doc. Okay, that's, that's all right. Anyways. Have you heard of people drinking the water in Pakistan or anywhere where you've traveled where they would get diarrhea and food poisoning? Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So you're familiar with that, right? Yes. And that's an idea that we want to work with a little bit. You know, if we put bad bacteria inside of you, you've heard of food poisoning and along with that could be like diarrhea, right? Yes. Okay. So now the microbiome comes along and we know a couple of things. One is we know that there are good bacteria in the microbiome and bad bacteria. And what I mean by that is there are some bacteria that can make you happy. Yes. What? There are bacteria yes. that can make you less depressed and there are bacteria when they are present in your microbiome, you're more depressed. Agreed. And, and you can do studies in mice 
And uh, you can tell whether a mouse is happy or not happy <laughs> because he doesn't play with others. He doesn't groom himself. His, his, his hair looks different. Then he doesn't eat and play and all those things. Kind of isolated. You, yeah, you can tell the difference between a happy mouse and a sad mouse. And you can make a mouse happy if you put happy bacteria up in his poop. And you can make him sad if you put sad bacteria in. There have been studies at the University of California in San Diego where they have put poop from one person in another person. And the poop that's in a happy person can make a sad person transiently happier and vice versa. So this bacteria is pretty wild. In addition, the bacteria that's in people who get heart attacks is different than people who don't. And the people who get strokes are different. And the new research shows that people who get Alzheimer's have different kinds of bacteria. So bacteria in our gut is undergoing a revolution and a lot of doctors and most patients don't know about it. So that's what we're gonna talk a little bit about tonight because what we're gonna try and argue is you were sick because you had an overgrowth of some bad bacteria, okay? Right. Does that sound a little familiar? Did we talk a little bit about this in the past? We did that. Good, okay. So I'm, I'm going over ground that you know, but we're gonna use that as a jumping off point to answer your questions about what's going on with you now. Is that okay? Absolutely right. Good, all right. So good bacteria, bad bacteria. Now what we know is that certain kinds of food and your diet can change the kind of bacteria. In general, meat, eggs, and dairy grow bad bacteria. And fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, high fiber, and beans grow healthy bacteria, and they grow healthy bacteria in a certain way. And I'm going to explain that. It turns out when we eat those kinds of foods, which are mostly plant foods, Plants are different than animals. And the main difference in their cells, you know, all of us are made up of individual cells. Those cells are different in plants and animals. The whole earth is divided in mainly into two big kingdoms, plants and animals. And the primary difference, or at least in my way of thinking, one of the primary differences is really simple. The cells and animals are surrounded by an outer lining called the cell membrane. And that's really flimsy. It's like a piece of thin plastic wrap you might get at the grocery store. Okay. On the other hand, plants are surrounded by an outer coating called the cell wall. And the cell wall is tough as nails. It's also got another name called cellulose. And you and I know it by another name, it's called wood. <laughs> Absolutely. So the outer lining of the cells of plants is wood. And when we eat wood, as you know, we can't digest wood. So when we eat wood or fiber, when we eat wood or fiber, we don't digest it. We grind it up a bit and we send it down through our gut and nothing happens. It's not exactly true, but for our purposes tonight, I'll say that. But when it gets to the colon, there are good bacteria. The good bacteria, they are wood eaters. That is okay. the bacteria that grow when you eat meat, like mutton or chicken, that we might get at a nice Pakistani restaurant and eat outdoors <laughs> in Islamabad some evening. That meat doesn't grow healthy bacteria. It grows these other bacteria. On the other hand, right. if, we got, uh, if we went to the market and saw oranges, and Dr. Atif would say, don't eat those because they're all contaminated. You have to wash them. And I would pour boiling water on it before I ate my oranges and apples from the market. Um, those things are filled with wood. And that wood is undigestible by us humans. And it would go down through our gut and it would generate happy, healthy bacteria. Interesting so far? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, that is the normal balance inside our gut. What we have learned even in the past year is we can cause disorder in that gut, disorder in the bacteria. And the disorder often comes with an episode of food poisoning. So for example, if you go to a restaurant and you maybe get some undercooked meat or contaminated or eggs or dairy, 
that can have in some what are called pathologic bacteria, not the good bacteria, okay. not the bad bacteria, but bacteria that will cause like that diarrhea, the giardia that I talked about. Okay. The research has shown if you let that bacteria in, it can cause such a ruckus that then you can get sicker and sicker. Now, let's go back to your MGB, okay? Yeah. All right. So you're wandering along, you've had your MGB for a year or so, you did well, and then suddenly things go bad. Yes, okay. it all went tip tipsy turny. Yeah, and so my hypothesis is that what happened is you got a batch of that infected bacteria and something else happens. The body is kind of protected from this bad bacteria using some defense mechanisms. And one of the defense mechanisms is that the upper gut is very powerfully packed full of powerful digestive stuff. For example, your stomach is a vat of acid. So when you put even a bad bacteria in there, it often kills it and protects you. Kills it, yes. Yeah. But that's not all. You've also got bile and bile is a powerful solvent that will blast apart fat. So again, your bacteria comes in there, you dump some bile on it, boom, it destroys it. Finally, you have enzymes like trypsin and chymotrypsin, and these things are designed to destroy tissue. So if you were to eat some bad bacteria, your stomach is designed, your human body is designed to protect yourself from a lot of that stuff because you probably eat some bad bacteria every once in a while. Maybe you touch something and you touch your lips or your nose and you get some bad bacteria, you swallow it, but you are built to destroy it, okay? All right. Now, for a hundred years, we've been doing the MGB. Now you might say, well, Dr. Rutledge, you look old, <laughs> not a hundred <laughs> years old. And I would say, thank you, I think. But the idea here is what we know is that when you do what's called the mini gastric bypass, you're actually doing an operation that was not invented by Dr. Rutledge. He's not that clever. I know him. He's old, but he's not clever. All we're doing when we do the mini gastric bypass is an operation that's been done for 120 years. So I'm going to talk about that for a second, if I may, if that's okay. Sure, sure. All right, so this operation that the, is the MGB was invented in the 1890s by a guy with a long beard. They didn't use gloves or anything. Old timey surgery, the first abdominal surgery almost, when they would cut out the bottom of the stomach for a cancer and they had to put things back together, they brought up some of the intestine to the side and it was called a Bill Roth, that's the doctor's name, two, because he did another one before this, the Bill Roth two gastrojejunostomy with an anticholic anastomosis. That's okay. kind of a mouthful. So in those days when I invented the MGB, which is not an invention, it's just plain old Bill Roth II with a gastrojejunostomy after a distal gastrectomy, I called it a mini gastric bypass because it was minimally invasive. I was one of the first people on earth to do laparoscopic mini gast or to do laparoscopic gastric bypass surgery. And it was hard. Awesome. 23 years ago. <laughs> so after a guy had shot, been shot in the belly and I'd done a Bill Roth II the night before, I started doing the MGB and it's done well. But it's not anything new. It's not anything new. And so what do we know about the Bill Roth II is some people, because of the bypass, will get bad bacteria in the bypass segment. Okay? So let me say oh, yeah. that a couple of times. So anybody can get bad bacteria in their gut, get food poisoning and have trouble. They have special systems designed to protect themselves, acid, bile, and enzymes. But the Bill Roth II can also get this. And because the Bill Roth II isn't done so much anymore, your doctors and surgeons around the world are not prepared to think about it and treat it. So that's why you were True. getting these diagnoses because what we think happened is you got something that has another name. And so this is the one, your disease 
I called it small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. That means some bugs grew in your gut. But the old name. Interesting. The name group, huh? Interesting. Yeah. The old name, the name that's been used for almost 100 years is called blind loop syndrome. Okay. Now, what that okay. means is the bypassed part of the gut, they were calling it a blind loop because it wasn't in contact with the normal flow because it was bypassed. And so some people said occasionally you'll get some bugs up in there and then they'll start this trouble that you're having. Now, oftentimes that can be fixed if we get it early. You had had it for a long time before you got to me. And so we had to undo your MGB. Right. Okay. But had you been able to get in touch with me when it first started, we might have been able to just grow some normal bugs in there, kill off the other bugs, and you wouldn't have had to have the surgery undone. Okay. Right. All right. But let's say again what you've got, what you had, and where you are now, just to explain for others. We don't think what a lot of surgeons and doctors think, which is you had trouble because the bypass was too long. We don't think that. We think it came on kind of suddenly because you got an infection in that blind loop and in the rest of the gut and that bacteria caused the diarrhea and the malabsorption and made you sick and we fixed it because when we undid the loop that allowed you to wash out the upper blind loop and then you got better. Correct. Okay. Now, you all know that, but we're going through that to explain it to you again and then to explain what to do next. But for those who are watching, including surgeons, medical doctors, and patients, warning, if you have an MGB, eat healthy and beware of food poisoning. If you get food poisoning, find a doctor who knows about it, or if you don't have a good doctor who knows about it, then you can call me and I'll be happy to try and help. But this is something God bless. That, you're very kind. This is something all around the world. My experience shows most doctors don't understand any of what I just told you. It seems confusing and difficult for them to understand. And they have treated people like you with intravenous feedings, all kinds of other things and had death. In other words, the way you were going, I think we might say, if you kept going in that direction, you might have died. Yes. And now, not going to die, and you're, we're going to make you better, okay? Right now, you'd like to gain some weight back and some more tricks and tips. Yes. But the bottom yes, line yes, is, yes. you are on your way down the drain, in my opinion. And so we acted quickly to wash out that blind loop. And now we have to fix up your gut. And that's what we're going to talk about next. But here's the big thing I'll stop and say three more times. The MGB is great if you get bacterial overgrowth secondary to a episode of bacterial infection. You need to have it treated aggressively by someone who knows what they're doing and lots of doctors and surgeons and patients don't know what they're doing. First of all, find a good doctor. If you can't, call me anytime and I'll try and help, but it's life-threatening and has led to deaths around the world because many surgeons and patients don't understand this. So I'll say it one more time. This has been around for more than 100 years. It's called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It's the same thing as what's called blind loop syndrome. And you can Google both of those to learn more about it. But that's the introduction before we go on to talk further, OK? Noted. All right. Now. Where you are now is you're pretty thin, pretty worn down, and pretty beat up, and you want to gain muscle mass and get better, right? Absolutely, Doc. Okay, I have good news and bad news. The good news is you're going to get better. The bad news is you still are fighting some uh, what's called dysbiosis or bad bugs, and we have to repopulate your healthy gut, and it's going to take time, okay? Okay. So... Um, now, you and I had talked before about what to eat, and so we're going to go through that a little bit, but the bottom line is we want you to get healthier faster, and you're already, um, how many days after your surgery? Uh, it's been like two weeks. Yeah, okay. So 
Here's a news flash. You were near death. It can take more than two weeks to get better. <laughs> okay. Very true. Very true. All right. So I appreciate you want to get better faster, but remember the way I thought about your health is you were on the edge of a cliff and you were about to fall over. Correct. Okay. So now you're not going to die, which is a good news, you know, and we want you to get better, but it can take time. And what we want to do is refill the gut with healthy bacteria. And we'd like you to eat some healthy food. And we'll go over that and what you're doing, see if we can polish it up a bit. But it, it's hard to go from near death to vigorous and healthy in 14 days. <laughs> true, true, sound, true, doctor. Does that sound reasonable? Yes. Okay. So let's go over your diet now. So you and I have talked. So let's go over what you're eating. So first thing in the morning, you get up about what time? A uh, Doc, I uh, wake up around five, six in the morning. Great. And after you wake up, when is the first time you eat or drink anything? Uh, I just have like uh, two, three glasses of water. And uh, then I have, uh, I wait. And then I have my steel cut oats and uh, some, um, you know, the fresh fruits. And that's about it. Okay. And that's about what time do you eat that? Around, let's say, 8 o'clock, 8.30. Okay. And then when do you eat again? Mm, doc, around, let's say, three hours after that. No, no. Give me the, what time of day. Um, around uh, mid-afternoon. Okay, that's Just wrong. before lunch. No, no. Okay. All right. Look, 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 look. Remember we talked. Your phone, you shouldn't have to guess. You and I went over this. You should be able to tell me eight o'clock, my alarm goes off and I eat at eight o'clock. And then 10 okay. o'clock, my alarm goes off and I eat at 10 o'clock. And then I, my, okay. alarm go, my alarm goes off, I eat at 12. Remember these numbers, right? Yes. No more about. This is, this is, this is your health we're talking about. So that means when this alar the alarm, remember we said roughly, now you can change this for your lifestyle, but 8, 10, 12, 3, 6, 8, you should be having a meal and you shouldn't have to say around and I guess, okay? Okay, doc, I got your point. Um, I'm sorry, but uh, it's not around. It's exactly what you just said. Okay, well then that's, okay, then, then I withdraw everything I said. So eight o'clock comes around and you're eating some steel cut oats and what kind of fruit? A berries. Blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, um, okay. a kiwi. Good. good. And okay, good. So, and roughly, roughly, how much do you eat and feel comfortable eating? A cup, a half a cup, uh, a quart? Uh, half a cup, a, 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 like, you know, three quarters. No good. dumping syndrome. And no dumping, right? No. Good. Okay. And you, do you feel super full or could you eat more? I could eat more, but I don't want to. And you don't want to because you feel full? I feel full. I'm okay. So okay. I don't want to feel like, you know, that the, the, dump, the dumping yeah, part. Yeah. So, you, so eat until you, you eat until you feel comfortable and then you stop? Yes, then I stop. Okay. And then 10 o'clock? Then 10 o'clock, uh, like, you know, I have a snack. Um, a, a piece of brown bread with some no bread. Um, not bread no bread no bread all right yeah bread doesn't help us i even take that um doc sorry i forgot to tell about that uh sukrat around 10 o'clock 10 10 th 10 30 and uh then i got this uh uh the live bacteria thing from no. dubai in no. The cold storage no 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 here's the problem so you're talking about probiotics, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Here's what happens. When you eat a bacteria, a probiotic, right? When it goes into your stomach, your stomach has that vat of acid, remember? Yes. And it has the enzymes, right? Trypsin and chymotrypsin, right? Mm-hmm. 
and it has bile. Those things are designed to destroy and kill anything that comes in. They break it into individual unliving amino acids, fatty acids, and carbohydrates. They're no more living things after they get to your stomach. The idea of probiotics is a good one, but it's been studied, it doesn't work very well. So don't make up these things and do them without talking to me if you want my best advice, okay? Okay, no it. In other words, you're saying, you said, I'll get this probiotics because Rutledge told me to have good bugs, right? Yes. And it, it sounds good. It, the problem is your stomach is a vat of acid. You're not going to get any live people out through there. Okay. In other words, if I tell you to walk through a burning fire at the other end of it, you're not going to be much use to anybody. Right. Okay. The one thing we want is what's called prebiotics. So write this down, prebiotics. Okay. Okay. Prebiotics. You know what prebiotics are? Can you please explain? Yeah. It's prebiotics or fiber. That's for the, that's why all these other foods, we want high fiber. That's why brown bread, it's not bad, but it's not what we want for you now because you're calling because you want to get better. The way to grow those new healthy bugs and get you healthy again is to give it more fiber and bread has less fiber than say beans or an orange or something else. Fiber is magic for regrowing the healthy bacteria. Giving more healthy bacteria in your food doesn't help much because your body kills them all, but your body can't kill, can't digest fiber because that's wood. Okay. Okay. So the Dubai probiotics, people are selling it and talking about it, but the research so far shows, just think about it. When you eat bacteria, your body kills them because it digests them. So it's not helping us. Okay. So we, we need to switch to prebiotics life. No, prebiotics, you're, you're switched to them automatically if you eat healthy food that I've talked about. You just need to think okay. more clearly that you're saying, oh, I wish I could do something else. You've gotten these probiotics. That's not what we need. What we need is just eat healthy food. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means at 10 o'clock, don't be thinking too clever. Just look at the food you've got and say, you know, it would be good for me to eat a little broccoli. Salads, yes, okay. It doesn't have to be salad. You could just be some broccoli or some asparagus or something like that because they're filled with powerful chemicals that are good for the gut. Right. And they're filled with fiber. And remember, fiber is critical for growing the new bacteria. Right, Doc. Okay. All right. So 10 o'clock, you eat what? I have veggies. Okay. Like what? Like the, cauli the cauliflower. Okay. And uh, beans. Um, okay. Let's talk, let's, soup. Talk about, let's talk about beans. So where do you buy beans? What do they look like? What kind of beans? How do you get them? How do you cook them? Um, cook them. Not exactly me. I do the cooking. The cook does it. And, but it's not the processed ones. It's you get them, you soak them overnight and things like that, you know, the procedure. Okay. Do you know how the cook makes them? He boils them with uh, uh, certain veggies like carrots, celery. Good. Okay, good. Do you know what spices or salt he puts in there? You have to find out what he's putting in. He's putting in like a curcumin, turmeric, good. black good. pepper. Good. A pinch, a pinch of salt, like you okay. know, to give it all a right. little no bit. No more of than pain. a pinch. All right. Salt. No is more than salt. a pinch. Okay. All right. Good. And so, and you have black beans or pinto beans or kidney beans. What kind of beans? All kind of beans. Good. Okay. All that is good. So, how often do you eat beans every day? Uh, like two times. Good. Good answer. Okay. Very good. Very good. Very good. And throw in some onions and all those spices. That's all good. Okay. Yes, capsicums and all those things, bell yeah, peppers. Yeah, yeah. Very good, very good, 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 okay. All right, so then what is for lunch? For lunch, yes, that's interesting. You might disagree with me, um, but uh, you know, all of a sudden switching for, to a complete uh, 180 degree uh, diet, I do have a, a piece of fish. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I, for you the have next a, a couple, piece of fish next, with like the a next, brown rice. Yeah. For the, well, for the, you want to get better faster, right? 
Yes. Okay, so lose the fish for a couple of days, maybe a week, and let's talk again. Okay. Okay. And we don't want brown rice because why? What's wrong with brown rice? It doesn't have much fiber. Okay. Okay. Now, I don't care what you do. You're asking my advice, right? Absolutely. Okay. So if you want to eat fish and rice, it's okay, but if they, they're not helping us. We, what we want to do is get your bacteria straight. Then you'll be able to have, to have occasional different choices. But right now, you're only 14 days after surgery and you were, I would say, kind of semi near death. We need your bacteria healthy again. And the way to get that healthy is fresh fruits, vegetables, beans, and not brown rice and fish. Okay. It's like okay. the straight, uh, you know, the healthy thing the, with a lot of fiber in it. Yeah, because we think that you were near death. Now, you were near death, not for any reason other than... I was, I was. Yeah, well, that was because you had bad bacteria. So now we need healthy bacteria. It doesn't mean you can never eat fish again, but for a month after your surgery, I would eat pretty healthy. And the okay. way to get healthy bacteria is not by prebiotics, not with fish and not with rice, even those sound like very good foods, occasionally they're good in the future, but right now your gut bacteria is full of guys that are trying to kill you instead of people who wanna live with you. The bacteria inside of you were like food poisoning. And now we're trying to grow a new healthy crop of healthy bugs, like we wanna grow an orchard full of healthy apple trees or blueberry bushes or something like that. And all we got is crabgrass and dirt in there. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to repopulate the gut. And we don't think about this, but you almost died from bad bacteria in your gut. And now 15 days later, you're doing great, but you want to do greater, faster. Okay, I'm with you. Well, what you're doing is not what I would do. I mean, I don't care what you do, but you asked my advice. So eat healthy for another couple of weeks before you start getting, you know, your own ideas again. There will okay. be chicken and fish in your future occasionally and rice also. But right now we're trying to sow a field to grow corn or to grow something healthy, to grow roses. And it's not time to be putting in these other things, which could be contaminated or grow and stimulate the other bad bugs. We're trying to get you better and it's a, it's a struggle. You've done better, don't get too clever. Okay. Okay, so what do you Makes eat? Makes clear. Okay, what do you eat in the afternoon? In the afternoon, doc, I have a salad. And what's in the salad? Um, it's got different veggies, fruits. Good. Uh, okay. apples, uh, the orange, uh, uh, you know, the fiber, not the juice. Good, good. And a, a pineapple. Good. It's okay. like, you know, something which fills me up. All right. Okay. And uh, how much of that do you eat? How big a, uh, a cup full or two cups? Uh, no, no, it's like a, a half a bowl, a small half a bowl. Okay. And All right, good. Uh, like, you know, it makes me hungry after every, like, you know, two hours. Yeah. Good. I feel like, you know, I want to eat something. Good. So when I, uh, before the surgery, um, I was eating and I was eating full. It was kind of a dumping thing. Yeah. But now I keep myself like, let's say 30% empty when I'm off to sleep or, you know, Good. I, Good. I tell myself, you know, uh, I don't want to eat more. I want to, but I don't want to. Got it. Good. Okay. And what do you have for dinner? Doc, for dinner, it's like uh, very simple. Like, I don't want to choke myself. Again, I have a soup, Good. a lentil soup, a light Good. soup, anything Good. which is, you know, uh, a doesn't... Lentil soup uh, with lots of veggies, yeah? Yes, yes, good. yes. Good, 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 good. Very good, very good. Not a lot of oil. It's not like dal. No, 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 no. Good. No, okay. not, no at all. not at all. No oil. I've had no, dal no, in India no. and, and Pakistan. Mm -hmm. That'll hurt us. <laughs> no, no, not not at all. Not at all. All right. Good. Good. In and fact, last night you last, have a snack? Last, last night I had brinjols and uh, mm, spinach. Good. Yeah. 
Good, 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 good. And what do you have for the eight o'clock snack? For the eight o'clock snack, um, peanuts, uh, cashews, walnuts, uh, no salt. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, good, all right. Okay, so what I would say is everything you're doing is very good. A few little tips and tricks, and then be more patient because 15 days from death, that's, you're doing great. Just keep going for another two weeks and then let's talk again. What do you think? I agree. It's just, okay. Doc, you know, um, when I was in the office, I go to the office and the people I interact with and they come up, oh, you got, what happened? You've, you've, you've yeah. lost so much weight. Yeah, That was course. the concern. Yes, they're right. Yes, you were on the threshold of death. But you know what? It's hard to come back from death in 15 days. <laughs> True. You know, I'm a good doctor, but that's asking a lot. It could take almost a month <laughs> to get away from death. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, I'll you could be I'll in the grave now. You days. had all those doctors giving you 23 pills. I got rid of all those pills. I can't make you the normal person in 15 days. Agreed. All right. I'll write down the today's date and, and then I'll bother you again after a month. You can bother me every day, but I can tell you what I'm going to tell you. Say, relax. I can't cure death in 15 days. <laughs> it takes me almost two weeks more to, to cure death. <laughs> okay. That's great. That's great. So that was my biggest concern. So how do I put on weight? So I have to wait yeah. for a month. You agree with the diet and yeah. we go yeah. on with yeah. that thing. And but slowly and about, gradually. Just say this out loud. How many days does it take for you to build muscle? Yeah. You know, have you ever built, even when you were normal and a young man, could you build muscle in 15 days? No. Hello? I can't, I can't say that again. I didn't hear you. No, doc. Say it again. I can't hear you. I said no. <laughs> right. And you were sick as a dog on 23 medicines. You can't build muscle. Yes, at that time. on 23, on 23, on 23 medicines. Yeah. Okay. So again, your question's a good one, but you know, uh, 15 days is a lot to make you a muscle man. Uh, you'll come back and you'll be healthy and thin, measure your waist and, uh, and, and, uh, and how you feel. Uh, you can do some exercises like uh, here's what I did when I was sick last February, I started doing push-ups, and in February of 2020, I could do one push-up. <laughs> so that's exactly what, what was going on with me. Okay. Well, so do a push-up and then write down each day. So now I can do 50 push-ups. In fact, I was, I was visiting with my new partners in Tijuana. And while we were sitting in the hotel lobby, I took off my shirt and did 50 push-ups. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which it just shows that I'm crazy, but, but uh, it takes time and effort to build up to 50 push-ups. So do a push-up a day. I, I agree with you, I agree with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do a push-up every day and count how many you can do, okay? Okay. And I can tell you, you can't go from zero to 50 push-ups in two weeks. That's right. Okay. No matter, no matter how healthy you were, right? You could be completely healthy. You can't go from one push-up max to 50 push-ups max in 15 days, right? Yeah, maybe I'm being a little overambitious. A little? Say it. Say it. Say it. I'm just being modest. I'm just being <laughs> modest, Doc. <laughs> just being modest. No, no. This is, this is good. I saved your life. <laughs> I said, well, I can't do Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. God has no, been I kind. I understand that. I understand that everything you said is good, but I feel really good about where you are, and it takes more than 15 days. Yes. Okay. So it, this was just, just the thing, you know, the people coming up, though it's none of their business to, you know, comment on my... Yeah. Um, yeah, but you're not in the hospital week. taking 26. They're right. You look, you were near death. They are right. Yes. And it takes a while to come back from death. You were down knocking on the door of the devil. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe you, you know, heaven or hell. I'm not sure where you were, but you were knocking on the door. <laughs> and now you are back Doc, from I hell. Was, I, I, I was totally disoriented. 
my mind wasn't working it was blurred yeah but all those symptoms they have they are not there anymore yeah 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 but to get to 50 push ups it will take a few more days <laughs> <laughs> it'll take more than a few days yeah exactly so take a breath your your friends are right they are seeing dead man walking that's true yeah <laughs> except you're back you're better <laughs> but it takes a yes. while because you were you were at the gates of hell or heaven hell okay <laughs> i didn't want to make any judgments <laughs> No, I'm just helping you out. All right. <laughs> with the honest answers. Doc, you, you, are, you are too good and God bless you. And um, I've, I've written out the date. I'll do a little bit of researching. And after a month, obviously we are on the WhatsApp and we're in touch. I'll, I'll get back to you after how I feel after a month. I'm here for you anytime. I think things are doing pretty well, given where you were. You know, you climbed out of a hole and your friends say, you know, you look like you climbed out of a hole. <laughs> They're right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. Thank you so much, Doc. Have a nice right. evening. Best wishes. And thanks for letting me share this with everyone. Thank you. You're welcome. Take okay. care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.